As you can see, we've got a rather large conifer, Lylandii hedge. Uh, I did actually film this about a year ago, and I recently re-trimmed it. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to re-film it and talk you through, sort of, uh, in, in more depth, my thought process of uh, how we're going to tackle it. As those who do a lot of hedges know, there's sort of 101 different ways to tackle hedges, but um, on this particular one, I want to do the top first, then that neighbour side, and then the customer side. As you can see, there's a good old gully in the middle of it as well, where it's been reduced at some point. Also, to give you a bit of a time scale, um, I got on this job at about quarter to eight in the morning, and I finished just after four. And as you can see, I've had to use a spreader board on this particular job, as that centre, even though it's covered, it, it just won't take me at all. Uh, it's not very often I use a spreader board, but um, this one is it, it is a must. And uh, it actually took me two hours to do the top, uh, which also reminded me in the future to use uh, knee pads, because um, that board does hurt your knees after a while. Now, some might agree with this, and some probably won't. Um, and it's not the perfect way I'd like to have done it. But as you saw, it is surrounded by gravel, this particular hedge. And doing the top, and I am on my own, I've put all the clippings into that centre gully. I know it's not perfect. Um, I would have rather swept them off the top. But I haven't got enough sheets to cover the whole hedge. And as you know, once conifer goes into gravel it, it just don't clear out and it looks a mess the only other option i had was to work off the ladder and keep taking the ladder along the hedge but that meant i'd have to have the ladder on top of the sheet on top of gravel which i didn't feel comfortable with as the risk of that ladder kicking out is quite high and this this hedge is quite high as well it's about 13 14 feet high obviously uh, if I want wasn't on my own uh, I could have had a workmate doing the side moving shoots along and I could have swept the top off but uh, I'm on my own so <laughs> I say I know it's not perfect but all the waste went into that gully and I did the same last year and as you can see there is nothing there it all rots away or over time slowly falls through the hedge and there is all done once I get on top of them hedges I like to stay on there until it's, until it's finished um, you don't want to be messing around get on and off uh, if, you, if you're going to have an accident that's when it's going to happen but uh, just because I do it it's not necessarily recommended you get on top of edges. I will just put that one in. I'm now on the uh, neighbour's side, or what you class the neighbour's side. It's actually uh, a little bit of a roadway, obviously behind the houses and the garages. Um, those of you who have eagle-eyed will have noticed at the beginning of the video there was a car parked here. And uh, luckily the lady came out and she was happy to, happy to move the car. Um, so basically I'm, I'm doing this side now because on the customer side I know no one's going to be there all day so I know there's going to be no cars there later or anything so I've not got to worry about that side at all it's going to be open easy to do so I left that till last um, so that's, that's sort of what's in my head get the awkward bits done while the area is clear to do them um, and how I cut it really was I do as much as I can off the ground with the, the short hedge car as, as this is a, a lot of hedge I try to use the short hedge car as much as possible it's just easier on your arms it's a long day it's a lot of cutting so 
so I try to make it as easy as possible for me. As you can see, I've got the sheets down. I actually use decorators sheets. Um, plus side of these are uh, they don't seem to blow in the wind as bad as plastic sheets. Uh, the downside of them is you can't drag them on the gravel because they're rich in the bits. Um, but other than that, uh, I, I do tend to favour them to be honest with you. I think these particular sheets are 12 feet long by 4 feet wide and I use 3 on this particular edge. Once I've cut as much as I can with a short edge cutter, obviously I've gone in with a long one now. Um, I, one big advantage of having two machines is you can have them set up different. Uh, it, it does save a lot of time swapping extensions or heads over. You can sort of uh, put one down and just pick one straight back up. I've got very little footage of actually doing this side as I had to move a few times because cars get coming in and I did expect that though. So, but there it is all done. And there's a family of ducks. I was quite pleased once this side's done. Because um, in sort of in your head, the worst of the hedge is actually done then. So after a quick cup of tea, uh, the next stage was just to get this very end of the hedge done. And then I knew I would be in the, na uh, the customer's drive. And plain sailing basically then. Um, I've not got one eye on my shoulder looking for cars etc. As I was saying earlier, we all sort of uh, work differently. Uh, but I tend to work from right to left. Uh, just that seems a natural way to me to do it. Uh, and it's much more comfortable I find. Um, obviously, I do the lowest part again. Lowest part of the hedge I can reach and then do the top. I know a lot of people have sort of uh, music in their ears as they go in on and whatnot, which is fine by me. Um, I don't tend to though. I like to hear the engine, um, or I sort of uh, you sort of lose yourself in your own thoughts as you go along, and you you're on autopilot. Uh, but one of the things I, I do tend to really do try to concentrate on is the tip of that hedge cutter, as one of the things I really don't like is sweep marks in a hedge. Um, I'm very conscious of that. Um, at this point, I finished the uh, end, and what I do is get the furthest sheet. It's probably pretty obvious, really, and tip that on the second sheet, the middle one, and then relay that one, and then that second sheet. I tip in the bag which is on the third sheet if that makes sense and if you're anything like me unlike this time most of the while I tend to miss the bag but at least it's still on a sheet and just basically because I've got three sheets I sort of leapfrog two along and that last sheet stays where it is and then um, once I'm ready to clear the end sheet and that middle sheet will be moved along same process. It, it's probably the same as most people do, um, but I always try to uh, tip them sheets in into the bag on the sheet. Um, I always the next stage now be I always like to do the underside where it curves under on, on these sort of kind of hedges first, as uh, they're just unpleasant bits to do. So I like to get them done out of the way.
one of the very important things um, when you're cutting anything really but anything sort of uh, above head height especially uh, wear safety glasses um, as uh, especially conifer if it does go in your eye it does sting um, I do tend to put the visor down as well when I'm cutting sort of quite high above me but sometimes I do forget that but I always 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 wear safety glasses I literally I put them on in the morning when I get in the van and I don't take them off until I get home uh, it's sort of pretty much my routine and that way you, you sort of you don't forget to put them on Certainly one thing on, on any hedge really is the amount of waste um, you actually, actually comes off them. Um, it, it's always surprising. So uh, certainly one thing I actually do is if I think I need uh, six bags, let's say, I'll always make sure there's eight in the van because uh, it is easy to underestimate them. And uh, obviously different, different years you get sort of different amount of growth due to the weather. Um, but uh, yeah, it's always handy to have just an extra bag or two just in case. And so sort of after I've finished with the long reach, I've gone back to uh, the short one just to finish that top. Uh, you may have noticed I sort of quickly have a I sweep across it quite quick in the first cut. It's basically just take some of that long straggly length off and then I can get to doing a sort of a, on the second pass a, a lot finer cut. One thing I tend to do is let my cuts overlap themselves. Um, so basically, once I've been part, I've cut over something. Uh, perhaps the next cut, only half the blade is going to sort of fresh stuff to come off. Um, I find that way. It, if there's any little stragglers or anything that didn't quite cut clean, it takes them off in sort of in that cut. And at this point, there's a new fence post in there. So I'm not sure what's, what's attached to it. You'd be surprised what you're hitting hedges. So I just thought you'd use hand shears around them. And as you can see, the hedge down the side of the alleyway there is a uh, well brown. And at this point, we're on the home straight. The last little bit, just on the end here. Um, this is always the best bit as well. So this is a lot of hedge and. Uh, it's reached that time of day. The old arms are starting to hurt just a little, but uh, it's always uh, it's always very satisfying once you're done. At the end of the day, you sort of stand back and look, and you know you've seen what you've achieved. Um, it, it's, it's always a good feeling, I think. And there it's all done. Top, both sides, and no mess on the gravel, which was the important bit and in total there was six mini bulk bags of waste so it was a case of uh, get loaded up and uh, get gone thank you for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed thank you